Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to all. What a wonderful day. And I must appreciate those who are joined on time to listen to the wonderful speaker. And the theme is understanding the causes for electrical fire. Most of us know that the reason, whenever there is a fire, the first reason, whether they do audit, whether they investigate, the first sentence that comes is due to electrical short circuit. Without proper investigation, the first thing they say is the fire due to electrical short circuits. Could be a reason, could be a overloading, could be a bad other thing, for many reasons. And statistics says, average around 26,000 26, people are lose their life. And every fire is a great lesson for us to understand, whether it is Mumbai fire, whether it is Gujarat fire, any fire, it's a great lesson for us to learn. While we, the government has declared Atma Nirbhar, Bharat, and Make in India, we could see in last couple of years, the country is becoming self-resilient. And I'm very happy to introduce to all of you, Cape Electric, Chennai-based manufacturer, who has invested a lot of, lot of time and energy and his uh, research on how to reduce these fire accidents. I'm sure over the period you will understand what Mr. Gopakumar is trying to address to all of us. Today, before we start, we have a wonderful keynote address by Mr. V. Suresh. V. Suresh is a civil engineer from Anna University and with was over 56 year old experience. He has almost put 56 years. This is a small, light, slight old uh, uh, PBD. And he's a former chairman and managing di director of FITCO. He's the current chairman of CAA, Indian Green Building Council. President of Forum of Critical Utility Services called FOCUS. Chairman of IGPC. He's the president for Good Governance India Foundation. He also received 16 hours and recognition and had to cap it with CIDC Industry in Doyen Award 2011. IBC Lifetime Achievement Award in 2014 and CIA World Life Achievement Award 2017. He's the most energetic, energetic person that we have come across and he's also the Vice Chairman of National Building Code. It's a Great privilege for all of us to listen to his keynote address. I would request, uh, I would now give the stage to Mr. V. Suresh. A great pleasure to join this wonderful program that we are having on understanding the cause of electrical fires and going to be presented by one of the best in this country. And that's my good friend, uh, S. Gop Kumar with whom we are the greatest of association uh, uh, professionally and also in the work of the National Building Code and uh, to write in the 2016 version on the part eight section two on electrical installation, GOP's input uh, is very, very important. And he came in over there as a committee member trying to bring in in line with not only the global best practice, including IEC provisions on some other subject there. GOP Kumar's uh, own uh, contribution in this area, uh, in particular, on work on lightning protection in buildings and earthing and related one, very, very important, significant. And I'm very happy that he is um, making this wonderful presentation to make it uh, an important topic for understanding for all concerned to deal with the uh, electrical uh, uh, safety and more importantly, fire safety. And uh, his concern is that how Electrical installations which are done, which can lead to faulty related installation, can lead to fire uh, uh, occurrence. Fire can occur in various ways. And uh, I'm happy that uh, a program of this nature, uh, my good friend uh, Dominic is there to 
welcome all of us. He is like heard his wonderful address there, and it's a great opportunity for me as president of Focus to uh, talk on this occasion because all the critical utility services become an important component here. Because you can have the fire coming from uh, the all the critical utility services. You, you can start getting the fire from the electrical short circuit or uh, it can be electrical insulation there or various equipments and machineries that you have kept there or the air conditioning installation or a lift installation for that uh, matter or uh, any other power equipment that you must have kept or uh, uh, the ICT installation that you might have. Any, anything that can contribute to fire can come from these sources. And uh, therefore, our concern today evening is focus, is understanding the causes for the electrical, electrical fires. Fires from the electrical installations point of view is going to be the topic that I wear. A good symbiotic relationship is there between safety in electrical installations and quality of installations as well as the fire uh, which can come through a spark or whatever. You would have seen so many hospital fires taking place over there. Uh, at, the, at the end of it, what happened? Some short circuit took place. And when the spark took, play, took over there, the whole environment in that hospital there had the saturated ethanol uh, and uh, uh, all the uh, disinfection over there, uh, saturation for the COVID and other related work. And there you have the many fires taking place in the hospital. So therefore, the spark... The spark was a thing, but the environment which helped to grow that particular thing into a large fire became an additional component there. So therefore, I'm very happy that a uh, topic is being discussed uh, of this nature. And uh, uh, the for me, having been in the National Building Code for the last 56 years from the first version of 1970, 83 version, 2005 version, and 2016 version, I'm very happy and proud that we have a good document which takes care of the state of the art uh, issues and coordination between all the other critical systems. The power is the one which, requ which requires run everything. You want the water to be pumped, or you want the uh, air conditioning to be run, or you want the lights to be put on, or you want to put the uh, any other system to come on, you require energy, energy for lighting, energy for power, everything, all coming from the electrical installation in a large way. And therefore, how do you deal with the safe installation is an important component. National Building Code Part 8, Building Service is a wonderful document, starting with uh, lighting, ventilation of uh, all the lighting requirement and ventilation requirement, and the electrical installation contribute to the power for that, and the HVAC system coming uh, closely, following the same lifts and escalators as an important component, which is again require power-driven aspect there. How do you deal with each one of them in a, in a detailed manner is important. And uh, the type of protection required in your installation, be it on the MCBs or uh, earth leakage, circuit breakers. There's so many interesting aspects coming over there. I'm happy that uh, 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 Gop will be talking uh, also on the earthing and related issue as an important component. As my own understanding is that every fire that takes place, every one in every two fire can come through an electrical faulty installation or a, a short circuit coming. Don't, don't blame it due to uh, the uh, faulty electrical installation. It can, due to various aspects, it can come over there. How does it happen? But there are there are various safeguards to deal with that. If a short circuit happens, what type of thing that you do to take care of protecting the system on that you is an important component before it conflagrates into a fire or whatever. And more importantly, this can happen, according to me, in low voltage system, not in the high voltage system. Most of the accidents happen uh, in this area. Domestic situations are very, very important. Quite often this happens there. Maybe very poor type of wiring and electrical insulation, not taking care of the type of zoning and facing not taken into account. And uh, the good understanding between the electrical engineers and the electrician who normally finally does those particular insulation wiring becomes an important one. IEC document has come out very well. Uh, I'm aware of 60695 IEC document uh, from uh, 1 to 10 there. Very good basic information in fire from electrical products as well as power supply connections uh, of various classifications, the PS1 to PS3 classification are very, very important. And therefore, we have to really see how well you can, uh, 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 earth fault protection can be done and provided for the same. And I said, these are monsoon days. I've just seen this year alone on lightning protection related, how many people have passed uh, uh, died uh, in building. So if you're not able to provide those particular protection, 
from the uh, sky to the building and then from the building down if you don't have the thing taken down to the earthing proper earthing related one very few uh, i am aware of large number of uh, buildings where you are not taken in some of the basic requirement codes are there codes are the national building code and the standards brought out by the bis and uh, uh, indian electricity rules are all providing the framework to deal with all that but what is important is to get larger awareness appreciation and application to make that particular thing happen and so that everybody concerned in the particular one not only the builder the architect the engineer the electrical engineer dealing with all the system the contractors who deal with the installation the electrician who finally does this work each have to play a role one is to by design you are taking care of the protection system other one is in the in the in the quality installation safe installation you got to provide you require a lot of inspection to be done proper audit to be at regular intervals to deal with that whether things are fine or not is equally important especially in the critical utility service is not enough that you done something in the beginning of the building and you got a completion certificate you got an occupant certificate gone everything no you got to continuously be seeing whether everything is properly working or not and therefore you should have periodical audit coming on that inspection to be done operation maintenance to be done in a regular way so that you'll be able to find out whatever uh, drawbacks are there or any weaknesses are there rectify those to retrofitting or repairs which are leading to costly damages taking place at a later point of time and i think it is a very very important topic according to me and i am very happy that uh, 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 we deal with electrical instead of various types of materials also and therefore what type of system that you will do for earthing is also an important component when you put it into the ground there with a pipe or rod or plate or whatever so these are details i don't want to get into that so the regulations uh, and standards have to be rightly understood by all concerned and how do you deal with the particular aspect of insulation safety aspect of insulation and i'm happy you went a wonderful session uh, with uh, go bimsal talking is a is a voracious speaker good articulation i'm sure with technical competence and content uh, knowledge in a very large way i'm sure he'll make it a very interesting evening for all of you and i wish you all the very best uh, for enjoy please be uh, alert alive take down notes on that any area you want clarifications on the particular thing please post it on the question box or chat box so that it also be an interactive session after the presentation i'm sure you'll have time for interaction with all you distinguished body i i'm so happy that you got such excellent response uh, coming from uh, the uh, distinguished audience in a large way and that's a great source of encouragement to all concerned and we are we in uh, focus are very keen to have a series of these particular seminars to sensitize all concerned dealing with these type of uh, live issues on which where we touches the common man touches the users it touches the family it touches the school teacher it touches the hospital it touches everybody it touches everybody not not just the professional electrical engineer or the electrician alone so we got to really ensure that you take care of all that is needed to provide that particular thing in the planning design installation as well as uh, commissioning and also the occupancy stage during the operational use of the particular area so a literally a cradle to grave approach is what we require in this particular thing especially on electrical installations and so that we don't create a problem they are created not for creating problem if that creates a problem due to electrical electrical installations being faulty or short circuit or whatever leading to fire we got to find out how best that gets out i think the losses could be as high as maybe 1000 crores or 2000 crores nobody has a figure on that particular thing due to electrical fire how much fire of course we have larger information you also know sources of how those have happened there one is to two is a good ratio for every uh, second fire it will be due to electrical uh, installation short circuit something like that so you got to really take care of it it's a real live issue we got to see how best we'll take care of it and uh, therefore i i wish uh, gopakumar all the very best uh for the presentation as well as the q and a session subsequently thank you very much and for the wonderful response you people have brought for joining in this uh, uh beautiful uh, evening session thank you mr gopkumar is an electrical engineer director of cape electric over 27 plus years of experience in electrical safety 
lighting protection and EMI, EMC of electrical installation. He has conducted more than hundreds of site studies and failure in electronic equipment and presented papers for more than 1,000 seminars and training programs. He's also one of the member in the working groups of Indian and International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC, and Technical Coordinator of Lighting Awareness and Research Center, Trivandrum. He has published articles about safety in various magazines and published the book, the missing link in the subject of elect electrical safety. What a wonderful uh, subject that he has chosen to write. I now welcome our great speaker, Mr. Gopakumar. Over to you, Gopal. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dominic. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to all the participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, some of you know me. My name is Gopakumar. I'm the managing director of Cape Electric. Uh, uh, apart from the business, I have uh, uh, I do a lot of you know technical uh, seminars, trainings, and all. I'm a member in the IEC TC committee, uh, TC64, TC81, and uh, SE37A. Basically, these are the committees, those who are making worldwide standards for electrical safety, the second one, lightning protection, and uh, SPDs, the search protection devices. Similarly, I'm also a member in the National Building Code Electrical Committee, then uh, ETD20 of uh, BIS, which is uh, responsible for making... Uh, National Electrical Code, uh, IS732, IS3043, and so on, plus ETD30 and ETD50. In fact, ETD50 is a very interesting subject uh, handled by ETD50, which is LVDC, the future uh, electricity usage. Now, with this, uh, I will have a small uh, uh, introduction about uh, uh, the company. Uh, we are a 25 years old company. We have... Uh, several products uh, with respect to safety. We are predominantly into the uh, maintenance and uh, uh, power production from wind turbines. But with respect to products, we have uh, uh, electrical safety solutions uh, as a designer, as an implementer, as a uh, inspector, uh, we are doing for several projects. We have uh, complete the earthing solutions for a modern building, not like the earth electrodes or earth pits, but a complete solution starting from the site studies and so on. Uh, we also design a lot of buildings, strategic buildings on HEMP. HEMP starts, stands for High Altitude Electromagnetic Pulse. Uh, if you look at uh, the, uh, the last one, uh, we have a subsidiary called as LPCI, which we are already incorporated into Cape Electric. There we are doing a lot of EMIMC studies. We also have industrial uh, installations such as uh, double insulated enclosures, panel boards, industrial trucks, and so on. We are established in 96 and 97. In fact, we are completing 25 years, almost uh, this December, January, we will complete uh, 25 years. Uh, our initial business was the uh, manufacturing of uh, Reactive power compensation panels. All of you know very well what is reactive power compensation. We were making panels uh, for wind turbines, especially uh, during 96, 97, which was having an operating voltage of 690 volt, not like uh, the uh, 415 volt used in the industrial uh, system. We were also the pioneer in the industry, introducing uh, surge protection devices uh, to various uh, industries. Uh, we also have uh, uh, distribution agreements with a uh, few German companies like Spelsberg, Teben, uh, Raycap, uh, PCE, and KLK Electroweld. Uh, in, we, in, if you look at uh, the, our uh, history, uh, uh, in 2019, we started uh, a new activity uh, like a, a partner in electrical safety. What do we mean by partner in electrical safety is... Uh, uh, we are giving uh, design support uh, in the projects. So we are training the designers how to design a good uh, uh, earthing system or equipotential bonding system or basically safety. It is not only related to earthing, but complete safety. We verify the entire uh, documents, uh, especially the drawings, uh, support during erection because uh, a lot of supports are required to ensure uh, finally safety. Uh, complete testing we undertake. 
we have long term contract with some of the clients uh, with which all their safety matters we are handling plus uh, uh, record maintenance for future for this uh, we have uh, support from one of the uh, we are developing a software uh, which is uh, done uh, developed by a team of engineers about 15 people for the last two years so we are still developing so we have uh, uh, as i said uh, what we mean by uh, uh, the uh, partner in electrical safety is uh, it is not uh, just about the air thing there are several subjects which we which has to be coordinated together to achieve uh, safety in an electrical installation so we give support for design train the engineers for uh, doing uh, safety things uh, in the design incorporating safety features uh, in the design verification then uh, checking the uh, documents and finally testing and the, the last one we also do pat uh, pat stands for portable appliance test nowadays you know multi storied uh, apartments uh, uh, whenever a new clients come uh, we are insisting to go for a pat test so that the entire uh, spectrum of safety electrical safety is achieved so this is what we mean by uh, partner in electrical safety Uh, we have uh, international collaborations with uh, spelsberg uh, from germany safi box pc and uh, raycap uh, and the klk electro world these are uh, with respect to our uh, uh, this is a small introduction what is air thing the definition of air thing is uh, very simple electric connection between conductive parts and local air this is the terminology which is used nowadays uh, in all these standards when we talk about air thing people also ask what do you mean by grounding actually grounding is a word a term used in americas the meaning of the term is same electric connection between conductive parts and local air then we have to find out what is the meaning of this local air and what is the meaning of conductive parts and all those things however air thing is a very simple subject but very very important subject with respect to electrical engineering why this is important the importance is similar to a foundation in civil engineering if you construct a building you need a very good foundation for long lasting uh, that particular building similarly if you have a very good air thing system your electrical installation will work trouble free for several years or decades without uh, any uh, much problems once when we talk about electrical installation you must understand that electrical installation is basically the wiring the panel boards the installation not the equipment or not the source so that part of the installation is supposed to give a average life of about 40 years so if we make a very good air thing of course the uh, life of the installation will be very very good and uh, the uh, failures or the accidents are very much reduced then what is the purpose of earthing the main purpose of earthing is to create a stable voltage of the power supply with respect to earth what does it mean is imagine you have a transformer output of the transformer is a three phase four wire system if you connect one of the wire to earth the current carrying conductors such as the phase and the neutral will have a stable voltage with respect to air once when you have stable voltage your insulation requirements are less and it has got lot of advantage now there are two type of power sources one is called as earthed earthed system in an earthed system uh, one live conductor is uh, earthed through a very low impedance that means a direct you take a wire and connect uh, connect one of the line to an earth here the word earth doesn't mean an earth electrode in soil it means a bus bar so that is called as a earthed system uh, which is generally termed as a tn or a tt system subdivided tn is subdivided into tnc tncs and tns system similarly the second type of uh, power source air thing is isolated air isolated means the current carrying conductors are either completely insulated from the earth or it is connected through a very high impedance and basically this is called as it now if you look at uh, in order to uh, make air thing first you should understand what kind of air things are there and what are the purpose of each and every air thing for this purpose 
the iec and the all the world standards define earthing into various types and various numbers are also allocated to each uh, earthing this is followed not only by iec this is all this is uh, the same in iso itu and all the standards for example 5017 this is a generic symbol 5018 is an earthing which is uh, called as a clean earth or the new word is functional earth for functioning of an electronic appliance uh, the appliance the panel board or the the plc will have a terminal earth terminal which is marked with 50189 50199 is a safety earthing 5020 is called as chassis earthing 5021 is called as frame or chassis equipotentiality 5173 is called as signal low terminal so wherever a terminal Uh, which is marked as 5173 you must understand that the potential of that particular terminal is very close to earth and very close to uh, uh, the, the that is going to become the reference for the earthing and 56032 is uh, do not connect to an protective earth so basically earthing uh, is uh, done based on its requirement first you should understand these particular these kind of requirements now imagine in a transformer neutral i'm just showing you a picture of a transformer the three phase goes to the equipment you have the neutral and the neutral is uh, earth if you look at the forward of is3043 uh, what is written is uh, as a matter of fact the earth now rarely serves as the part of return circuit but it is being mainly used for fixing the voltage of system neutrals so earthing is used for fixing the voltage of the neutral that means it is a functional requirement similarly if you look at the system earthing the definition uh, if you i don't want to read the definition what it says is uh, neutral earthing has got uh, two functions uh, it can be denoted by 5018 and 5019 it has got a function and it has got a safety so both the requirement of function and safety are different i will explain this in detail later now this is what is required in a source what is required in an equipment first we should understand what kind of equipment are there equipment are classified into class 1 class 2 class 3 class 1 is an equipment whose body for example a motor or for example a panel board whose body will experience a voltage uh during an earth fault it is denoted by either the number 5019 or letter p or color combination green and yellow basically the class 1 equipment has to have a terminal which is marked in this way or the symbol 5019 what does it mean connect this terminal to the protective equipotential bonding system of the installation that particular equipment which is having this particular marking must be connected to the protective equipotential bonding of the installation so equipment the earthing is very simple you have a terminal you take a wire you have a terminal in your equipment you take a wire and connect to that particular equipment to the equipotential bonding system of your installation then we go to the second type of uh, equipment which is class 2 class 2 is an equipment which is having double insulation means whenever there is a fault in this particular equipment the exposed metallic parts are not going to experience a shock voltage so these are shock free uh, installations or shock free equipment say for example a two pin equipment with two pin plug such as a, a video receiver or audio video equipment which we use in our home but some of those equipment will have this kind of a symbol what i mean is these symbols are very much mandatory for at the moment imported products probably in future this will be mandatory for indian products as well basically a class 2 equipment which require an earthing will may have this kind of uh, a symbol which means that particular equipment require a functional earthing for its operation similarly the third one class 3 equipment class 3 equipment means it is an extra low voltage equipment operating with less than 50 volt ac or 120 volt dc uh, this equipment of course it doesn't require protective earthing the 5019 is not required but the functional earthing is required so basically an equipment is having its own requirement 
like uh, 501918 or uh, uh, 5020. Now, function alerting is a subject with which uh, the communication or the electronic equipment are connected in such a way that uh, they are able to function very well uh, under normal or under a fault or under a lightning condition. That is a different subject. But our main focus is today is about uh, safety. IS3043, 11, class 11.1.3, what does it say? The purpose of earthing the non-current carrying metal plant uh, and equipment of a 250 volt, uh, but not exceeding 650 volt is, uh, please read the highlighted uh, portion. Provide a low earth fault loop impedance to facilitate automatic disconnection of supply. Then the second purpose is to limit the rise of potential. So basically, earthing, in an installation has got two purposes. One is to make a very low fault loop impedance connection so that your equipment is able to disconnect in case of a fault. And the second is to reduce the touch voltage. Now, if you look at the class number 23.1, basic purpose of earth fault protection. The earth fault loop impedance has to be low enough to allow adequate earth fault current to flow to cause an overcurrent protective device to operate within a sufficiently short time. What this part says is, in a normal installation, earth fault protection is achieved by disconnecting a protective device, which is nothing but a fuse or an MCB. Similarly, or uh, where there is not possible to achieve a low enough fault loop impedance, the disconnection is achieved by an RCD. So these conditions are very well explained in this standard. How to make an earthing of uh, your DG, for example, in IS3043, picture 38 to 41, you can find this uh, picture. The only difference is I put it in a color uh, 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 combination, ROIB, uh, you know, red, you know, in the black, uh, neutral and black and green uh, is the earth wire. The DG body, engine and alternator body is connected to a earth bus bar. Neutral of the DG is connected to the same bus bar. Incoming EB supply, the PE conductor is connected to the same bus bar. Load side protective earth conductor is connected to the same bus bar. The same bus bar is connected to independent earth electrode with a number 5020. The same bus bar is connected to extraneous conductive parts uh, such as uh, other metallic parts. This is how you are supposed to make an earthing in your installation. As I said, earthing is a very, very important subject. If earthing is wrong or if earthing, if you make a mistake in your earthing, the uh, uh, building uh, can create, you know, a very dangerous situation. But you must also understand that an electrical installation will work without an earthing as well. Then what is the purpose of earthing? Earthing is to ensure that your installation is safe during an insulation failure or during a surge, or during a lightning, or during some events. So in a normal condition, your electrical installation will work even without earthing. So whatever we are doing in the name of earthing is required only when there is a critical situation. Now, how do we make earthing in a consumer premise? Let us say an industrial premise. The industry is having, let us say, a BMS panel or a control panel. Class 1 equipment, what is protective and functional uh, earthing? Now, imagine you have a panel board. The panel board will have ROIB three-phase neutral and the PE terminal. PE terminal means the protective earth terminal. In order to achieve safety, you are supposed to connect it to somewhere. For control panels, which is having, uh, say, for example, 24-volt PLC or some kind of communication equipments, are supposed to have one more terminal, which is called as FE, functional earthing terminal. In an electrical installation, the functional earthing and the protective earthing must be connected strictly only at one place, not uh, at frequent places. So functional earthing is basically called as an isolated earthing or an insulated earthing. Basically, a class one electrical equipment requiring functional PE and FE looks like this. It will have a Three-phase and neutral terminal, a protective earth terminal, and a functional earthing terminal. Now, the examples I have mentioned here. Now, let us see how do you make uh, uh, earthing in a control room, for example. 
a location where concentrated class 1 equipment with fe terminals class 2 and class 3 equipment with fe terminals means functional earthing terminals how to make earthing you have some class 1 equipment class 2 class 3 equipment the first one is safety all the class 1 equipment which is having a pe terminal must be connected to the uh, met means main earthing terminal or equipotential bonding conductor so this dotted line green and yellow is called as a protective earthing which is necessary for class 1 equipment now what do we do with the fe terminal the fe terminals of the equipment are connected to sbb sub bonding bar for functional purpose the color code specified in the standard is green and this connection preferably must be isolated means insulated so you must use insulated conductors and you should do this particular connection and making this connection is again there are several other uh, uh, requirements such as the purpose of pe conductor is to allow low fault loop impedance for disconnection of protective device and the purpose of fe fe functional earthing inside a room is carried out in different topologies called as star topology mesh topology ibn topology and all i don't want to explain this too much because this is a very very technical uh, subject now how to do earthing in an electric in a building what kind of connections are required what are the names what are the uh, terms used in your building you will have exposed conductive parts such as panel board body motor body exposed conductive parts are applicable for class 1 equipment not for class 2 equipment then your installation also will have extraneous conductive parts extraneous conductive parts are such as uh, the construction steel metal pipe metal handrail sometime aluminum facade the frame of aluminum facade and all these are called as extraneous conductive parts you have to have a equipotential bonding bar which is called as met or a bus bar which is offering a potential very close to the earth potential zero potential which is going to be the reference of this entire building now all the exposed conductive parts are connected to met through i have given a red color actual color is green and yellow but just for identification i gave a red color these are called as protective earthing conductor the extraneous conductive parts such as a metal pipe and such as other metal parts are connected to the met through the blue color wire which is called as a protective bonding conductor that means at the mains incoming MET is uh, very closer to your uh, mains incoming panel, the main switchboard, uh, and at the main switchboard, you are supposed to make uh, uh, protective uh, equipotential bonding. Now, the MET is connected to earth electrode in soil in case of a TT system. And this particular wires are called as earthing conductors. The same MET is connected to the neutral of the source. which is also called as a earthing conductor in case of a tn system and both in the source neutral and the earth electrode these are called as means of earthing and an electrical insulation also require number 4 which is a supplementary protective equipotential bonding all these wires together are called as or all these connections together are called as protective conductors so basically whatever you are seeing in the picture is called as protective equipotential bonding every building is supposed to have this kind of a protective equipotential bonding and this is called as uh, the equipment there thing but uh, uh, you can just imagine whether you are connecting your metal parts such as handrail such as uh, the aluminum facade frame and all to your earthing system you just uh, uh, find out now once when we talk about the protective bonding let us say for example this uh, the connection number 2 which i am scrolling uh the resistance of this wire the sizing of the wire the resistance of each joints all these are important now what about uh, functional earthing the uh, in the previous slide i have shown uh, functional earthing all the equipment together the fe terminals are connected to pbb or sbb the sbbs are connected to every building shall have a primary bonding bar which is for the purpose of uh, functional earthing uh the 
uh, the wires here, the PBBs are connected to SBB, like uh, some uh, bonding bar. And these wires are called as telecommunication bonding bars. Anyway, I don't uh, explain this much because this is, uh, you know, a little bit uh, uh, tricky to understand. Every building at the service entrance, that means at the main switchboard, whatever the services which is coming from outside, metallic services which is coming from outside, we are supposed to create an equipotential bonding. In the picture, what I am showing is a metal water pipe, gas, yes, sewage pipe, telecommunication, power supply, and so on. This has got actually three purposes. The first purpose is protective equipotential bonding. During a fault, people inside the building shall not get a shock. Also, electrical, there shall not be any spark. So the first is no shock, no spark. Number two, in case of a lightning strike on the building or on the service line, the potential differences, voltage between two service incomings are reduced to a very low level. Number three, this protective equipotential bonding also reduces the shock voltage in case of a fault on the high voltage side of the transformer. Imagine you have a HT transformer and there is a fault on the HT side of the transformer. This fault on the HT side sometimes creates a shock hazard inside your building. But this protective equipotential bonding will uh, provide a safety against all these three. So there are three purposes for this particular protective equipotential bonding at the service entrance. Similarly, you can see this picture in IS3043, which is explaining uh, what exactly you mean by equipotential bonding conductor. So number one, is the equipotential bonding conductor. It is a bus bar which is running all around the building, which is uh, supposed to be uh, of uh, uh, zero potential. Now, M stands for exposed conductive parts. Three-phase equipment or larger equipment supposed to are supposed to have two connections, connections in duplicate. You can see here two protective conductor in duplicate. So larger equipment are supposed to have two connections to the protective equipotential bonding, and these are called as double earthing. This is double earthing has nothing to do with two earth pits in soil. So double earthing means the protect the, the exposed conductive parts of class one larger equipment are connected to the protective equipotential bonding with two connections. That is a double earthing. Also, in the previous slide, I have shown the fault loop impedance how fault earth fault protection is achieved in case of a tncs system tncs is a system or a, uh, a system earthing which is generally used for public electricity distribution in that particular case imagine there is a fault here the fault current is returning back to the source through the pen conductor it is coming back the fault current is coming back to the fault through the live conductor the impedance of this circuit, the impedance of this loop decide the amount of fault current and the amount of fault current decide the disconnection time of the circuit or the protective device such as an MCD. Remember, for earth fault protection, RCD is an additional protection. It is not the primary protection. Primary protection is your fuse or MCD. So the earth fault loop impedance of this particular circuit must be lower enough so that higher current flows and disconnect the MCB and the calculations are given in the standard. In case of the next network, which is called as a TT network, the source is earth the, to earth electrode in soil. The equipment side are connected to different earth electrode in soil. Imagine there is a fault. The fault current is returning back to the source through the earth electrode, through the soil. It returns back through the system, the, the power supply earthing. So through the equipment earthing, it goes to the earth electrode. Through the system earthing, it comes back to the source. And finally, the fault loop circuit is closed. Now, under this condition, resistance of the earth electrode at the source side and at the equipment side, these earth electrode resistances will come into picture. As a result, the fault current will be very much less. The fault current is not enough to trip an MCB. As a result, the very simple calculation or the very simple solution provided in the standard is you put a 30 milliampere RCD at the origin of the installation. Uh, I have shown RCD as a series uh, device, but uh, I'm sure every electrical engineer will. Uh, this is just you know to show you uh, there is a protective device. So in a TT network, 
for fault protection 30 mA rcd is mandatory as per this particular standard now remember this tt is only for public electricity distribution not for industrial or commercial installation or not for places where you have a transformer within your compound or if you are a ht consumer this is not applicable for high rise buildings for industrial and commercial installations we are supposed to have a network called as tns which is basically a five wire system in a tns system imagine there is a fault the fault return is happening through the protective conductor and now this is the way the fault loop the the uh, um, the dotted lines you can see the fault loop circuit the impedance of the circuit ensure that uh, the protective device is uh, able to trip or not so basically your thing is all about to make this impedance as low as possible installation or equipment your thing means you have to make this uh, this conductor the impedance of the conductor must be very small that means no loose contact sizes must be higher and so on another requirement is the protective conductor must run very close to the phase conductor or phase and neutral conductor the idea is whenever there is a fault current flow through the protective conductor the loop is reduced to a very low level as a result the electromagnetic effects are or the mechanical forces effects are reduced so basically industrial and commercial installation we are supposed to have a five wire system now what is fault loop impedance basically the calculations are very much given in the standard i don't want to explain the calculations uh, to you because most of you knows it very well uh, the impedance of that particular circuit decide the amount of the fault current which decide the disconnection time so earthed system as i said the earthed and unearthed system in an earthed system safety is achieved by automatic disconnection of the supply protective equipotential bonding and automatic disconnection of the supply for a disconnection there is a maximum time so within certain time you are supposed to disconnect otherwise the fault will create fire or electrocution now for disconnecting your mcb within this time the fault loop impedance is very much important which is recorded in the several standards what i am showing is an IS 732 1989 a very old standard 32 years old standard you see here uh, the uh, section 5 of this standard talks about uh, earth fault loop impedance testing this is about testing earth fault loop impedance so this parameter has been included in the standard uh, approximately 30 years back but even today very very few installations do this particular testing then the second what are the testings required in a modern installation is 732 2019 recommends to go for 10 different kind of testings and one of the testing is a number 6 effectiveness of automatic disconnection of supply what does it mean is for getting fire protection and shock protection uh, you are supposed to disconnect your supply for which you are supposed to ensure that your device is able to disconnect within certain time by making this particular test so basically the modern electrical engineering or electrical uh, installation standards are asking for 10 different tests out of this 10 four are in supply off condition and uh, six tests are in supply on condition now there are several conditions i am only showing the testing of the installation but don't think that testing will completely solve your problem no uh, the standard is advocating for an inspection approximately 16 parameters must be inspected and these 10 tests must be carried out in order to ensure safety out of this there are two tests related to earthing the number one resistance measurement of conductors and the six effectiveness of automatic disconnection of supply i will show you from the standards on later on now is 3043 uh, recommends or advocates to go for a system which is called as a tns system for industrial and commercial premises with the pme what is pme in large installations you are sometime unable to create a very low fault loop impedance path as a result your protective device may not work in order to solve the problem what it says is you make an earth grid interconnect the neutral of the system and the extraneous expose the extraneous conductive parts of the installation so that 
you have an additional path for the fault loop uh, for the fault current to flow back to the source so automatically the fault loop impedance is smaller and uh, you get the efficient uh, disconnection of the supply and this is what is explained in the uh, is3043 and this uh, kind of uh, a connection and earthing is very much mandatory not only for fault loop impedance reduction which i uh, as i said that this is uh, for example to reduce the uh, fault voltage uh, reduce the voltage of induced uh, things such as uh, from the lightning this is necessary to reduce the voltage uh, shock voltage uh, during a high voltage fault so all these things are very well documented but basically this is how you are supposed to make earthing in your uh, building in your if it is a industrial or commercial building now but uh, what do we do actually most of the installations in india transformer neutral has got two connections to two earth pits in soil transformer body two separate panel board two separate uh, ups two separate elevator two separate so this is basically a kind of an undefined network so this is what we do separate 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 here to pits basically this is an undefined here thing uh, this uh, this kind of here uh, thing if you make uh, you can never achieve safety so this is absolutely wrong nowadays we also make here thing in this fashion you know a group of uh, uh, earthing interconnected like electronics interconnected together to one earth pit the power earth all the electrical items to one earth electrode lightning protection to one earth electrode unfortunately this is also wrong this is you should not follow you will not be able to get the safety in this case and uh, if you have uh, different earthing and if you interconnect all the earth electrodes under the soil as a ring or a, a grid or whatever this is also wrong you will not be able to get safety so your thing must be done as per the picture which i have shown in one of my last slide the exposed and extraneous conductive parts of the installation must be connected to the main earthing terminal of that particular installation through different uh, conductors called as a protective earthing conductor protective bonding conductor supplementary bonding conductor and so on the impedance of these wires the continuity resistance of these wires are extremely important now i will show you uh, how to make the earthing uh, some of the examples of uh, so some of the examples of uh, uh, testing of earthing system uh, especially iec 60 one of the standard which is actually safety of lv machine class 18 is the verification now you see the first verification is verification that the electrical equipment complies with its technical documentation so uh, the the consumer who buys the machine uh, first he has to read and understand that it is as per the uh, technical documentation and uh, then he has to do the testing the first testing you see here verification of continuity of protective bonding circuit so the equipment or the machine is earthed in the sense the pe conductor the pe terminal of that machine is connected to the equipotential bonding conductor so the verification of continuity of that earthing conductor or that particular wire must be tested and ensured that is earthing number 2 in case of fault protection by automatic disconnection of supply condition of protection by automatic disconnection of sub supply shall be verified so the first one class 18.2.2 18.2 i show you what exactly these uh, tests mean verification of continuity of the protective bonding circuit the resistance between pe terminals so where do you have the pe terminal the pe terminal is in the machine the resistance between the pe terminal and the relevant points that are part of protective bonding circuit shall be measured with a current between at least 0.2 ampere and approximately 10 ampere derived from an electrically separated supply source having so basically what it says is the after making the connection you are supposed to test the resistance of that particular connection with a meter electrically isolated supply of uh, having a test current of maybe probably about 10 ampere i would recommend that if you go for an indian meter then you should have a test current of minimum 10 ampere otherwise you will not get the correct value then the resistance measured shall be in the expected range according to its length the cross sectional area and the material of the related protective conductor so basically imagine you are 
for a typical uh, system you require a 35 square millimeters of wire copper so after making the connection you check the resistance of this particular wire find out the resistance of the wire from uh, the manufacturer's catalog or from the recommendation of the standard and find out whether the resistance is within the limit so what do we achieve here loose contacts are nullified you are sure that there is no loose contact uh, the resistance of the wire is good so that there is no cut in in between then the test number 2 fault loop impedance verification verification of the fault loop impedance by calculation or measurement you forget about calculation which will be very very difficult at the moment you know lot of meters are there uh, we also do calculation however uh, meters are there after installing the machine you are supposed to do a measurement so basically testing of the machine means you are supposed to uh, test the continuity of the wire and the fault loop impedance similarly another case iso 8000 8100 the lift the new upcoming standard which is going to become an indian standard you see here uh, first is the visual check next one is continuity of the protective conductor means the wire the resistance of the wire it must be very very small number d verification of the effectiveness of measures of fault protection protection against indirect contact by automatic disconnection of supply so the standards are actually very well documented and very well written in these uh, subjects but unfortunately we don't uh, do uh, exactly what is recommended similarly in a hospital additional test for special location what is a special location in a hospital special location is uh, for example an operation theater or uh, for example an icu or uh, the locations where class 1 class 2 medical equipments are used the class 1 class 2 medical locations are there so for those cases number 2 measurement to verify that supplementary equipotential bonding what is supplementary equipotential bonding imagine you have an operation theater all the metallic items in that particular operation theater must be interconnected in such a way that during normal condition the touch voltage voltage between two simultaneously accessible parts are less than a certain millivolt maybe 30 40 millivolt so you need to have a very good connection now the standard for the medical location says you are supposed to do the testing of the supplementary equipotential bonding now verification of the integrity of facilities required with the for equipotential bonding it's always every standard recommend to make equipotential bonding a good earthing means how good is your equipotential bonding and the testings are also very much uh, documented in all the standard now let us say for example a hospital how to do the testing supplementary equipotential bonding unfortunately only very few hospitals have made this protective measure so there is nothing to test because the safety measure itself is missing in most of the places now i'm sure you are aware of the electricity act uh, 2003 act uh, uh, section 149 explains uh, you know offenses by companies and offenses uh, and what kind of penalties are there so in case of any negligence in an electrical installation in case of fire uh, you know the owner of the building is also guilty so we you have to be the owners of the building must be very very careful because uh, why i am showing this uh, uh, electricity act in the uh, presentation is uh, mostly the building owners are not uh, sometimes you know they are a little bit uh, careless on the electrical safety so if uh, uh, you are guilty you know the, the the if you even if your electrical engineer is uh, made uh, some mistake sometimes the owners are uh, made guilty now the uh, next subject uh, the first so far i was explaining about the earthing how you should make the earthing in a installation the second part is uh, what kind of uh, wires or what kind of safety are required say for example protective conductor current what is a protective conductor protective conductor is an earth wire different protective conductors are there like pe conductor fe uh, p uh, pb conductor means protective bonding conductor earthing conductor and so on now the maximum amount of pe conductor current in ac system is uh, you can see here for a line current of less than or up to 2 ampere the maximum leakage current expected in a protective conductor that means an earth conductor or a green and yellow wire is 1 milliampere 
for load more than 20 amps the maximum current expected in your uh, protective conductor is 10 milliampere this is for one condition probably there is a little bit uh, some more conditions are there which i am not explaining but basically what you should understand is the current flow continuous current flow through the earth wire must be negligible very very small if the current flow is exceeding these limits then we are supposed to have additional earthing provisions such as a reinforced pe conductor in order to ensure that the current is lesser than this particular limit every electrical installation is supposed to make a test of insulation resistance how to make the insulation resistance test you must disconnect your equipment you must test the insulation resistance of your wiring of your uh, uh, including your panel board you must disconnect your earthing and you, you must test the insulation resistance between neutral and the protective earthing conductors the minimum resistance required is 1 megohm if the resistance is lesser than 1 megohm then your uh, electrical installation is not in a good condition this being the fact practically what do we do I'm just showing you a classic example. There is a source, uh, let us say in an IT building, there is a source, uh, the neutral is earth, the potential between neutral and earth closer to the source is uh, near to zero volt. After the MDB, probably the neutral and earth is two volt. Near to the equipment, uh, the voltage between neutral and earth are sometimes five volt. The equipment vendor, if it is a sensitive equipment, he always say that uh, my equipment will fail if the voltage is five volt. So they always demand for a voltage of lesser than, say, for example, one volt for your equipment. Otherwise, your equipment will fail. In that condition, what people do, there are a lot of uh, spurious products or non-standard products available in the market. One such product is called as a digital grounding device. The manufacturer will claim so many parameters. Whatever problems you have, uh, he will call this device, digital grounding device, which I have put DGD. Uh, all solutions are available in this particular device. Practically, what they do is they simply connect neutral and earth. They short neutral and earth inside this particular equipment. As a result, what will happen is you must understand the reason for this 5 volt. This 5 volt is due to the neutral current flow. The current flowing through the neutral conductor multiplied by its, resi by its resistance will give you this voltage drop. Now, by making a shorting at this particular uh, place, what exactly going to happen is the neutral current will come up to this place. Then partial neutral current will flow through the uh, neutral conductor and balanced current will flow through the earth conductor. This neutral conductor or neutral current which is flowing through the earth conductor is called as, uh, it is a kind of a circulating current. Imagine your neutral current is 10 ampere, but after connecting this particular device, uh, about 5 ampere current flows through your earth conductor, but our maximum allowed current is, uh, let us say, for example, 10 milliampere. So you are actually violating the electrical safety uh, uh, system. Now, these kind of devices or any shorting between uh, neutral and earth in an installation is deadly. Please don't do it. You can connect neutral to earth only at one place, strictly at the source. After that, your neutral and earth must be separated. So if you make any connection, then your earthing is gone. Current flow will be, continuous current flow will happen through the earth conductor. As a result, you, can, you will have fire, you will have electromagnetic problems, you will have a short circuit, and basically you will end up with an accident. So this is one of the issue uh, if you go to your industry or if you check an industry uh, since i have conducted a lot of safety surveys i know that uh, for electrical engineers uh, shorting neutral and earth is uh, sometimes a big solution but that is actually a big big mistake now the uh, fire how to uh, uh, get rid of uh, fire uh, in electrical appliance the power source as uh, are classified into three with respect to fire Class 1 power source means a power source which is uh, unable to create a fire condition means the, the here the power in watts. So what is power? Power is nothing but the power consumed by your equipment or the power which is going to create uh, heat in whenever there is a fault or whenever there is an arc. So this particular power 
irrespective of the maximum limit where i have put 200 watts as the maximum limit actually it's irrespective of the maximum limit if the fault is reduced to less than 15 watts after 3 seconds so here within 3 seconds the fault energy is reduced to 15 watts this is called as a power supply class 1 which is not supposed to ignite a fire this kind of a power supply you are not they are not supposed to ignite a fire under normal condition power supply class 2 means a power supply which is reducing the fault to less than 100 watts within 5 seconds under this condition ignition is very much limited no ignition is not so common power supply class 3 it can ignite fire so power supply classification is very much necessary especially for an equipment let us say for an uh, for an air conditioner you have an air conditioner the air conditioner is having a fuse internal fuse whenever there is a fault uh, sorry not a fault whenever there is a short circuit or uh, an over current between line and neutral then your fuse will blow and uh, the device is disconnected from the circuit but uh, the same uh, fuse will not disconnect whenever there is an earth fault. If you wanted your air conditioner to disconnect, then your earth fault loop impedance must be negligible. Then only it will work out. Otherwise, you have to have a 30 milliampere RCD at every installation. Uh, so basically, this is all about uh, earthing. One of the main application of earthing which we uh, discuss is about uh, lightning protection. What do we mean by lightning protection? You know very well that uh, lightning protection, the Indian standard 62305 is advocating for a mesh at the top of the building. Uh, then uh, several down conductors, for example, 10 down conductors in a typical building. Then equipotential bonding, that means the down conductor and the MET are connected together. Uh, then you are you can have earth electrodes in soil or earth electrodes in uh, inside your concrete and so on. This is uh, the uh, explanation which is from a global very good uh, very well accepted standard 62305. But whenever it comes to earthing, what do we do? We have a rod at the top of the building. I'm not saying all the buildings, but most of the buildings. Uh, there is a rod, early streamer emission rod at the top, one down conductor and one earthing. Unfortunately. This kind of a connection is not recommended in the ESE standard itself. There is an ESE standard which is called as NFC. So the standard of the French code is explaining in this fashion. This picture is actually from the French code. It says you are supposed to make a perfectly equipotential bonded system. Over and above, you can have an ESE rod. This is what it says. But the, the ESE manufacturer will never talk about this equipotential bonding. They always talk about a one rod protecting 100 meters. This is wrong. Now, earthing of lightning protection is carried out in two ways, type A and type B. Type A means every down conductor, you have to have a, either a vertical conductor or a horizontal conductor. This is called as type A. Type A is recommended for smaller buildings, for larger buildings and larger industrial installations. We are supposed to have a ring conductor, type B means a ring conductor all around the building, one meter away from the building, half meter below soil, as I close the loop. This is uh, the way of dissipating, the best way of dissipating lightning current in existing buildings. Now, in a modern building, the steel which is inside the concrete, the steel which is a part of your construction with uh, superimposed mesh conductors, you can use it as a part of your earthing system. This is called as a foundation earthing. Foundation earthing has been made mandatory in European countries since uh, probably uh, 25, 30 years. Whereas in India, uh, this has become a habit only after the introduction of uh, the National Building Code in 2016. So the best earthing is achieved by making a foundation earthing. Anyway, as I said, uh, this is what uh, mostly we do. Uh, a foundation earthing system or a global earthing system where you can, uh, uh, you don't need to have an earth electrode in soil for your transformer, DG and all those things. So this is what uh, which, uh, we, uh, we are doing mostly in our projects. Now, another purpose of earthing, which is always creating a hazard without intimation is a fault in the high voltage system. I'm showing you a transformer, high voltage winding, the low voltage winding and the low voltage part. A fault in the high voltage system or uh, HT side of your uh, uh, installation 
it can create three problems in your building one is a over voltage at the lt side of the transformer winding next one is a over voltage at your equipment imagine you have an inverter or you have a refrigerator suddenly your refrigerator or your uh, class 1 electrical apparatus it has failed so sometimes you don't know why the equipment failed so if you check the reason for failure sometimes it has failed at the same time when there is a fault on the high voltage side such faults also create a lot of fire hazard handling this kind of fire hazard is or ignition of fire is very much related to earthing three problems as i said one is your transformer may fail anyway it's outside you don't need to bother the second is most of the time your equipment may fail the third problem is you may get a shock a person who is touching some part let us say somebody touching the refrigerator will get a shock rcds are not practically possible rcds will not work under this particular condition so earthing has got actually very very important roles to limit the temporary over voltages and shock voltages inside your equipment now what do we do for modern buildings modern buildings the recommended way of earthing is called as a global earth global earthing is a, a typical uh, earthing system which is uh, achieved by interconnecting the earthing of extra high voltage uh, high voltage uh, low voltage uh, your dgs your ups elv and all these things together in a typical fashion so that the uh, voltages are very much uh, lesser these are very well documented in the standards uh, of iec and uh, uh, en standards of course the is standards are also upcoming Uh, what does it mean is uh, imagine you have uh, a large building let us say for example a data center where there is an ehv supply you have 11 kv distribution you have buildings with 11 kv supply and lot of transformers sometime transformers are there in each floor of the building for that particular uh, application uh, the uh, global earthing system is an earthing system which is achieved by interconnecting different earthing systems together this is the most modern method of achieving safety in a large industrial or uh, in buildings where you have your own transformer how do we uh, measure and what kind of things are required i am just showing you the page from the uh, risk assessment page from the iec 61936 earthing system design flow chart data collection initial design global earthing system yes design complete if you are doing a global earthing system you don't need to do all these uh, parameters such as soil characteristics uh, current flowing to earth impedance to earth earth potential rise permissible touch voltage all these calculations are simply not required you just go for a global earthing system but ensure that uh, the shock voltages are reduced to less than the limit which i have shown in one of the slides modern buildings also require in addition to the global earthing system they are also supposed to have a mesh bonding network mesh bonding network means the structural steel elements are interconnected in such a way that the uh, equipment finally the equipment which is installed between the equipment the resistances are very much reduced as a result uh, you achieve a very high degree of safety a very high degree of reliability uh, in your electronic equipment this is a Uh, very much actually earthing is all about uh, these things now what are the problems when when it comes to earthing the following problems uh, we, we are facing wherever we go for an audit uh, we are facing these problems number one what kind of system earthing you are using normally it is unknown are you using tn or tt or it mostly the engineers uh, not all the engineers but most of the engineers doesn't know then we have to explain to them then they say okay it is a tt system but sometimes it is not a tt system it is a different kind of system so the information on system air thing is uh, missing protective air thing like uh, connecting the steel pipe uh, fire fighting pipe uh, to your equipotential bonding conductor in a high rise building protective air mostly it's uh, missing people don't do this functional air thing means for the operation of electronic equipment you are supposed to connect it in as i said in one of the slides instead what we do we take a wire and connect the equipment to an earth pit in soil this is wrong protective equipotential bonding mostly is a problem fault loop impedance test and the ensuring disconnection during fault this is also uh, not uh, uh, you know very rarely done 
fault loop impedance uh, reduction measures in industrial and commercial buildings uh, by additional grid is also uh, a little bit a problematic area testing of equipment earthing and supplementary equipotential bonding say for example like uh, you have a lift or you have a uh, a large machine or you have an operation theater supplementary equipotential bonding and the continuity resistance measurements we rarely do Early steamer emission lightning uh, protection with the one rod, one down conductor, one year thing is uh, uh, followed. Temporary over voltage reduction in uh, the low voltage side of a transformer during a fault in HV side is uh, generally not carried out. Uh, global earthing systems are not followed. Mesh bonding systems are not followed. Actually, a good earthing means all the above. So, a good earthing means you have to have a very strong, a good uh, system earthing, protective earthing, functional earthing, protective equipotential bonding, fault loop impedance and reduction measures with a tested uh, system, TOV uh, reductions, uh, temporary over voltage reductions due to a high voltage fault, nothing should fail on the LT side, mesh bonding network and so on. This is what is about uh, earthing in a modern building. Uh, earthing in electrical installation is like, uh, it is an important subject, it is as important as a foundation in a building. If you, without a foundation, if you construct a building, you can be sure that uh, the life of the building is very less. Similarly, if you don't have uh, all these measures in your building, and if you try to put uh, 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 electrical installation, of course it will work. As I said, an electrical installation will work even without earthing, but it will create a disaster whenever there is a problem. Uh, so, a building where the above measures are not implemented, you cannot claim safety, especially if you are in Europe or America, it's very clearly documented that if all the above, sometimes some of these uh, the, the bullet points are not applicable to your building, but for a larger building, sometimes all the things are applicable. If you are not following this, of course, uh, the, you cannot claim safety. And unfortunately, what do we do with respect to our thing? Unfortunately, we install more and more earth pit in soil with chemicals, bentonite, fly ash, and expect safety during fault. So, actually, the subject of earthing has nothing to do with the earth pit in soil. Earthing is a subject which is ensuring all these bullet points which I have put here, system earthing, protective earthing, functional earthing, and finally, mesh BM. So, this is how earthing must be carried out. Now, what I request to you is, if you have any questions, you can ask me. I can uh, clear it to you. Uh, probably I also uh, request uh, Mr. Dominic that in case of any future questions also I can answer. Uh, uh, you know, as I said, it is an extremely important subject. Without earthing, your equipment may work. Absolutely no problem. For 25 years, it may work. That means sometime 25 years, you have no fault or you have no short circuit in your building. But earthing is necessary whenever there is a fault or whenever there is an abnormality in your building. So by this, uh, I would like to uh, stop uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, probably we can go for the uh, question answers. Thank you, Gopal Kumar. Uh, yeah, we, it's almost uh, one hour, 15 minutes. Wonderful, highly technical. Um, enlightening uh, presentation that you have made. I could see while you're presenting, a lot many people are demanding the PPT, saying that it's such a good subject that they wanted to uh, keep listening to your presentation and uh, quietly and understand again and again, And which means it's a wonderful uh, uh, presentation that you have made. And uh, being this technical, I'm sure you know, we need to keep listening again and again. And as I said in the beginning, uh, we are just beginning this uh, series of technical uh, knowledge series on electrical uh, safety system. I'm sure uh, GK will continue to do this uh, in coming days. So I'll just, just, I would request the participants who are here, kindly post in the Q&A. If you see there, uh, we can take around 20 questions. There's a Q&A box below the, chat box next to the you know this uh, chat polls so you may put, put your uh, uh, questions there i'll just take it i'll begin the question the people who are putting the question on the chat so in the chat what happens i may not be able to read so i would request you to post in the q and a so that it will be it will go on record so i'll start with mr armugam rajendran okay 
Will the record session be shared? Of course, yes. Uh, Muthu Swami is saying electricity board, who supplies transformers are requesting for three earthing pits. How can we avoid by explaining them? Yeah. <laughs> You see the regulation, uh, regulation for example, CEA regulation number 41, class number one, sub regulation one, uh, is a part which actually people are very much misunderstanding. So that uh, regulation says uh, every neutral conductor, you are supposed to have uh, two earth connections, uh, two, two separate earth pits in soil. Actually, this, that part of the regulation is talking about uh, the public electricity distribution, which is not applicable for a transformer terminal. You should read the regulation number 13 of uh, sub-regulation number 13 of uh, main regulation 41 of the CEA measures relating to safety and electric supply, which very clearly says the transformer neutral terminal must be connected to the earthing system or earthing arrangement. So you need to have uh, probably instead of one connection, you need to have uh, two connections. Uh, how can we uh, avoid explaining them? Yeah, uh, we, I have actually published a book, uh, Missing Link. We have circulated about 10,000 copies of this particular link, uh, this particular book. In that particular book, uh, you know, I've explained with uh, pictures how you should avoid and why you should avoid or the misinterpretations are very well explained. So probably if you have this particular book, you can make use of it or I can uh, send you the book, but then you have to uh, send us the message uh, of your address. We can send you the book. Unfortunately, no soft copies are available because uh, we are working on the second version of the book. Thank you. Uh, I have posted the Mr. GK, um, uh, GK's uh, contact details in the chat box. So people who wants to write to him, they, you can write to his mail IDs and also his contact number. And move on again, generator suppliers is requesting for two earthquakes. Why? It's, you know, totally misinterpretation. The, mm -hmm. I have shown you a picture from the standard, which very clearly it says what you should do. Generator doesn't require any earth pit. You need to make a bus bar. Neutral and body must be connected to the bus bar. It's a misinterpretation. So it is, I believe, generator suppliers are demanding. You know, they, it, it is uh, the <laughs> manufacturer or the guy who's giving on rent is asking for a two or three. Anyway. No, uh, this is, you uh, know, uh, with respect to everything, a lot of more than correct ways, all wrong things are uh, being, you know, <laughs> made. So this is a misinterpretation. I'm 100% sure. Yeah, Govind Rajan wanted to know: Is the India was in India was incorporating the electrical standard as in practical? I, I don't really understand the question. Uh, in uh, if he is talking the, about the standards, of course, or whatever I explained to you, this is from the Indian standard only. It is uh, IS seven three two for low voltage system. Uh, code of practice of wiring. Also, you can refer to the National Electrical Code of India, NEC. A new NEC is going to come uh, probably within a few months. Okay, Sandeep Agarwal is asking the case studies like Bombay Fire or Gujarat Power. I don't know, was that Gujarat Power? Is there anything? Uh, any training regarding earthing is available. So, Mayesh Pandit is asking, can we have a training on uh, earthing? Is there any available training on? Yeah, we are actually doing, uh, we are uh, making, uh, along with an NGO, we are making a campaign, but it's a mass awareness campaign, uh, monthly four to five classes we are doing. But the whole air thing is about uh, uh, four classes, uh, two hours each, totally about eight hours. Uh, so you can participate in that, uh, those uh, programs. Mostly it's available on our uh, social media, you know, uh, the LinkedIn and all those uh, places we are advertising. You can. Uh, contact us through that, or you can get registered through that. These are free, not the chargeable classes. Uh, Sri Kumar is asking for stat, uh, static earth thing. Please indicate the earth resistance value. Uh, the continuity resistance, not the earth pit resistance. Continuity resistance. Uh, uh, it can be any value less than 100 million. The connection. Yeah. Mm. That is the answer. Okay. Uh, Sampat Kumar, will TVSS is useful, is LT panel protection, in LT panel protection? Uh, actually, TVSS uh, was a very old name. 
this was used in americas during 1970s 1980s they themselves had changed the name to spd the new name is spd surge protection device but you know we have the legacy of using uh, the old names uh, like uh, uh, in this particular case tvss is of course using spd in the power panels are also uh, sometime mandatory yeah on uh, mr Pur uh, british purohit is recommending for the non engineers can you release a book with a simple understanding so good suggestion uh, uh, some simple guide for non engineers non electrical <laughs> yes uh, we already have those soft copies uh, probably in the next coming days i will try to publish it in the uh, linkedin or uh, the social media pages uh tanmay Pan, uh, pandya is saying i am an electrical contractor from gujarat it seems there is a gross misunderstanding in earthing system in the electrical infrastructure here that every consultant designs here for a large industrial setup with a 1.25 megawatt transformer how could you how would you explain the tnes system with pen grid some practical insight would help uh, you know explaining this particular design in through uh, uh, <laughs> presentation probably is very difficult because we have to find out the uh, on the first on the high voltage side okay i can tell you a very easy tip we have published uh, posters we have a lot of posters uh, the chief electrical inspector of gujarat uh, his office will have these posters probably after diwali we are sending about 100 posters to them these are a2 size big posters which will explain you how to make these connections so please get in touch with chief electrical inspectors office uh, last week uh, saturday sunday we made a program for the engineers of uh, inspectorate and the distribution companies in uh, gujarat uh, there were uh, more than 400 450 participants were there so now they are aware, slowly the system starts changing now. Srinivasulu from Golapalli is asking, please explain I, uh, TT, IT in the practical example. Yeah, uh, TT is a system where the transformer neutral is connected to an earth pit in soil. Example is a distribution system, low voltage public electricity distribution system. That means the power which we get to our houses. Transformer source is earth. All the equipment in our building are connected together uh, through the copper wire and finally it goes to a separate earth electrode, independent earth electrode. Now actually, uh, TT is an established network for public electricity network. What is important for us is we must install a 30 milliampere RCD at the meter board for earth fault protection. MCBs will not work. So TT along with RCD is safer. IT practical example, IT is an installation, say for example in a hospital, in the operation theater, uh, the supply shall not trip during a fault. For that particular purpose, there is a small isolation transformer. The secondary side of the isolation transformer is insulated and the insulation monitoring devices are used. Uh, imagine this insulation transformer is connected to different uh, light fittings and uh, several uh, biomedical equipment and one of the equipment uh, made a fault. Actually, you don't need to trip uh, the MCP. Uh, under fault, uh, you can continue your activity. So that is IT. Arbugam Rajendranath, what should be the earth resistance? Uh, as I said, uh, the earth resistance, the earth electrode resistance is significant. Uh, only for dissipating or only while dissipating lightning current. That itself, uh, the recommended 10 ohm is absolutely not required uh, if you go for a ring earthing uh, or if you go for a foundation earthing. So basically, earth resistance has nothing to do with uh, safety. If, mm. uh, if you go for a TT system and if you put a 30 milliampere RCD, the earth resistance can be even uh, 200 ohms, 300 ohms. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Pramod uh, uh, Dwayne is asking, can we confirm electrical mat only required front of the panel uh, for safety? Yeah, this is actually uh, uh, increasing the resistance of the floor is a safety measure which uh, we are supposed to do. 
uh, for places where frequent or large installations are there or frequently people used to do some kind of maintenance or checking the readings and all so this is an additional safety safety measure a rubber mat in front front of a panel board okay vijay bagade is asking is there any is standard where spd such protection devices are mandatory or compulsory in high rise towers you see in india yeah, nothing hmm. is uh, mandatory or compulsory it depends on whether you need safety for your building if you need safety for your building you should do it so uh, if we think that uh, the the compulsory part uh, of course uh, uh, we can read it in a different way the electricity act says uh, in case of any problem the housing the building owner will be in trouble in case of any accident now it empowers the uh, electricity electrical uh, rules uh, rules means uh, regulations if you read the regulation regulation says uh, you are supposed to follow the safety measures as per the national electrical code as per the national electrical code you are supposed to use spd for not only for high rise building almost all buildings so indirectly it is mandatory but uh, as you, as you know people try to read in between the lines and try to find out how to escape it uh, uh, technically speaking it is mandatory uh, again shukumar uh, i have uh... sent you the details of uh, mr uh, gop kumar i uh, want somebody is asking the details contact details of shukumar i again uh, posted sorry uh, gop kumar I, i posted in the chat box people can note down on that what okay what is the reason uh, okay uh, somebody is asking reason fire why in bangalore is nothing you know no proper investigation happened some some says it is gas leak uh it to you know white paper is said to be open in the market uh, in the domain so still investigation is going on but i stay very close to that uh, insane where it will happen it is not due to electrical short circuit or anything it's a man made fire so i can indirectly it's a man made fire uh charanjit singh is how can we get a copy of the missing link i think there's a lot of demand for missing link book uh Uh, let's see how we can uh, connect as i said uh, given the details in the chat box please uh, connect with them on you can write a email to gk he will get back to you that is office will get back to you uh, santosh kumar is asking how the earth conductor sizing is defined yeah uh, you know there is a, if you look at the class 5.4 of the standard you know explaining it uh, over uh, program will be very difficult there are several parameters which we need to consider to size the earthing conductor uh, as i said there are three type of conductors protective earth conductor protective bonding conductor and uh, uh, earthing conductor so earthing conductor is the one which goes to the earth electrode protective earthing conductor is inside your building protective bonding conductor is inside your building so Uh, it depends on whether the fault current is expected or only touch voltage reduction is expected whether it is a tn system or a tt system these are very well explained and documented in the standards so probably in a, uh, you know this uh, this question uh, to answer itself it takes uh, two hours so uh, one of the method is it is there in the is uh, uh, 3043 and is 732 please read the respective uh, clauses Uh, Srinivasan is again asking 5 peak KVA UPS. How many are thing is required? Only one. If you look at the neutral, every UPS is supposed to have an earth terminal inside the earth bus bar inside, and that earth bus bar is supposed to have that marking which I have shown. Uh, all the exposed parts of that UPS must be connected to that particular terminal. The only question is whether the neutral is earthed or not. Then. the second question is uh, the the sub uh, question is whether electrical separation is there or not so answers for this is uh, the uh, is standard is asking neutral earthing must be made on the mcb db the outgoing mcb db of the ups however it is only a piece of wire connected between the neutral terminal and the earth terminal this has nothing to do with the earth pit in soil Uh, richard this is asking in rocky area what should be the distance between two electrode uh i really don't know why two er electrodes are put as i said the earthing has uh, for safety earthing has nothing to do with earth electrode 
but uh, imagine you have uh, an earth electrode of 3 meter uh, then probably the the distance between two electrodes can be double the length of each rod either 3 meter or 6 meter anything up to 6 meter is okay uh, shiva kumar who is from ktspl is asking can we have testing method for lightning protection with testing points Uh, yes, of course. Uh, lightning protection, the continuity resistances must be measured once in uh, uh, six months visual check and once in a year in explosive areas, once in two years in normal industrial uh, environment. These are very much uh, mandatory. Uh, there are, you know, the respective standards explain those methods, and there is a sequence which we are supposed to follow. It is very much there. Reason, uh, reason behind uh, Mumbai fire still. investigation was going on yesterday also there was a meeting uh, unable to find a reason for the mumbai fire so still investigation in progress uh, wonderful session uh, see call if neutral earth electrode and body earth electrode are interconnected underground is same grid is it tn dash s system no it is uh, you have a bus bar near to your transformer the body of the transformer and the neutral of the system must be connected to the uh, bus bar now neutral where to connect uh, it depends also on the question how do you have uh, the earth fault protection for the transformer uh, generally if there is no earth fault protection both the neutral and body can be connected to the same bus bar which is as close as possible to your source wonderful uh, jerome lobo is asking is marconite a good earthing material <coughs> uh, as i said the uh, earthing has uh, not much to do with the earth pit in soil earthing is a science or earthing is a subject which is uh, which uh, uh, discuss about uh, the interconnection of different uh, items in your building such as the exposed conductive parts extraneous conductive parts and all so these are uh, you know connections which you are supposed to make uh, with a wire you don't need to put something in soil and uh, dig the soil and uh, we are not talking about the earth electrode uh, in your thing okay uh, again sampat kumar in an application they recommend tpne five core cable and five bus bar are required in mcc can you see any benefit in this uh yes of course this is uh, uh, the the three phase and neutral and earth this is one of the best system uh, in, in for which can be adopted for industrial and commercial installations three phase on neutral bus bar and one earth bus bar okay uh, those are the question box uh, we have 34 questions uh, uh, we selected uh, mainly main most of the questions and there are in the chat box very well appreciating the knowledge of Mr. G K, and there are one or two questions I see. Uh, if I will really please send book a bell to me. Your missing link book is in great demand. Look like uh, I think uh, we should have that in bookstore quickly. Is there any I S where S P D search protection devices are mandatory or compulsory for I R S tower? I think that is we already answered the question. Okay. Yeah. please provide recorded okay sure what okay is arish uh, arish is asking what are the special requirement to be observed in the safe and hazard free maintenance of earth pit especially during rains dust storms or other environmental disturbances and how to improve competence of maintenance maintenance personnel oh competence can be increased only by training <laughs> that's that's a lot of training what should be the value of a pit resistance for 415 volt system what should be the value for yeah, uh, resistance for for <laughs> as i said in a tt system um, uh, it can be even 200 ohms or 300 ohms or as a special case make it less than 500 ohms it will work believe me i think uh, uh, we, okay. okay the last question is come 
Prem Raj is asking, do you mean if good equipotential bonding is there, earthing pit and earthing electrode not necessary? You see, earth pit or earth electrode is necessary under two conditions in a building. One is to dissipate the lightning current. Dissipation of lightning current is possible through a conductor which is even installed inside the concrete. That means the foundation. In a modern building, the foundation will do the job. So earth pit or earth electrode in soil is practically not required. But the, uh, the, the steel inside the earth, uh, the, the foundation is the earth electrode. So we cannot say that the earth electrode is not necessary, but earth electrode is necessary in a different way. Um, then uh, the second part is in case of a TT network, which is applicable for public electricity distribution, small, small houses. Yes, of course, the house and the transformer separate earth electrodes are required. Then other than these two, uh, you don't need to have actually earth electrode. You don't need to have only for two purpose or basically one purpose uh, for dissipating the lightning current. You need to have something uh, which sends the current to the soil. Otherwise, uh, Good equipotential bonding. If it is there, you are done. That is the best way. A uh, lot many congratulations to you, GK. You know, it's uh, Jerome is saying best session on earthing system I ever attended. So, which means uh, we need to do more and more on the earthing system, global earthing system. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have posted his website, kfindia.net. Uh, Again, repeat, kpindia.net is his website, and a lot more information are available in it. And uh, as I said, he is one uh, knowledge bank. Other than he has his own business, he represents in um, BA standards and uh, National Building Code. Any input, any suggestions are most welcome to him. And as we all say, knowledge is not limited. It's continuous process of learning. And we will continue to have many more series coming in. You may share your thoughts. If you feel that there is some, some subject we are missing or some other subject that we need to cover, please feel uh, free to write to Mr. GK and we will come out with another program in the next 30, 40 days. We will also have a training sessions and certification program by Cape very soon. Uh, GK, uh, you have, we are almost now one hour, 40 minutes. It's a wonderful yeah. to have you. Uh, you know, you're a great speaker and I know, you know, many, you are in demand in all over the country and globally also to speak on this subject. And I wanted to thank you for sparing your valuable time to come forward and doing this presentation uh, through blue and gray. We are very, great, very, very grateful. I always, three principles, I always keep telling, follow these three principles. First, first 25 years of our life is all about learning and next 25 years of our life is all earning the next 25 is all giving so uh, learning earning giving so giving is something that we always need to practice knowledge is not to carry when we die knowledge is to leave here for the rest of our generation to learn i'm sure you all will come forward in our next session and support us and bring in other engineers who wants to change our nation. So our nation need talented engineers and electrical subject is a big subject that it's a continuous uh, learning. And we will also learn along with you. I would request now, uh, uh, you want to say any thank you note to Gopa, Gopa Kumar to the audience? Uh, yes, uh, thanks to all of you for your uh, encouraging comments. Uh, uh, as uh, at the beginning, which I said, that, you know, it takes a lot of hours to explain everything. So in two hours or this one and a half hours, whatever possible, I try to make it as uh, quick as possible. So as a result, I was going very fast. Uh, probably in the next sessions, uh, we will educate you how this has to be done. So thank you very much for the time being and uh, have a nice uh, weekend. We will also share, uh, we had almost 1,130 registration and we had a very good participation, uh, over 350 participations. And we will share this recorded YouTube link to everyone who people are registered. I know being Saturday weekend, uh, you know, you have family commitment. We'll also try to do this in the first half of uh, uh, next Saturday, uh, coming Saturday. We'll try to, do, we'll try and see. And as I said, Gopukan in great demand, 
to speak in various forums. So I will see next available time and let you know. And I would now call uh, Lakshmi to give a token of uh, a word of thanks. Sorry. Good evening, all. I am Lakshmi Venkat from Blue and Green. It gives an immense pleasure for giving me an opportunity to give word of thanks. I would like to thank our speaker, Mr. Gopa Kumar, Director, Cape India, who honored this webinar with his enlightened presentation. I would like to thank all the participants, audience, and Mr. Dominic for making this webinar a grand success. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a safe week, weekend, and advance happy Diwali. Celebrate safe Diwali. Thank you very much.